so good evening students in our previous class uh, we have started with phylum arthropoda and we have completed the general characters and unique characters of the arthropoda and we have started with the classes and we have started with uh, class ornithophora and we have completed the crustacea so what we observe in this class is the seven classes of arthropoda we will be seeing the appendages and how they are differently arranged and we will be seeing the structures like respiratory structures and the excretory structures that is very important so how the body is divided and everything now there are seven classes in arthropoda that is ornithophora crustacea arachnida insecta diplopoda and the um, mirostomata or there are seven classes uh, we have completed the crustacea and the uh, ornithopora now now today we'll start with the uh, class arachnida arachnida so this class includes the animals like spiders and scorpion scorpions now in this case and this class of animals also the body is divided into two parts what is cephalothorax so we have seen earlier the crustacea also they also have this the body is divided into cephalothorax and the abdomen okay from cephalothorax there are four pairs of walking legs and one pair of chelaceae okay and one pair of pedipal this is very important so this kind of pedipal for extra structure can be seen in this particular class of animals pedipal okay and the respiration is tracheal tracheal respiration and excretion uh respiration is tracheal respiration mostly but the scorpions they show by the book lungs and book, book lungs having book lungs is an exclusive character of the scorpions okay very important and the excretion through malpighian tubules tubules and they also have this urate cells now let us take examples of the spider now spiders the body is divides into the cephalothorax and the abdomen from here we find this four pairs of legs 1 2 3 4 and one pair of chelaceae and in addition there is a pedipal to be find all these structures in case of spider and this spider very uh, uniqueness in abdomen uh, there is a gland which secretes the web we call it as spinneret gland spinneri glands on abdomen now they are the one who secretes this web the web is important for spiders to capture the prey okay now moving on to the scorpio so they also have this cephalothorax and abdomen has many segments and these segments are gradually decreasing when going to the posterior side 
So can you observe this? The segments are gradually decreasing. The size on the posterior they have this claw. This is called as anchor claw, and this is very poisonous. Poisonous claw. They also have this walking legs, four walking legs on either sides, four pair. They also have this chili sheep, and they also have antenna, and they also have this pedipod. Okay, this is the structure of scorpion. Okay, now the exclusive character they have this book lungs. Respiration through book lungs. And one more important, the female scorpion eats away the male cock scorpion after copulation. Female scorpion eats. male scorpion after copulation and this is a unique character we we'll find in animal kingdom with the scorpion only and the second thing they, this is the animal started showing the carrying of x okay the female scorpions they take care of x Okay. This is a very important things. So under this class Arachnida, you need to understand they have this four walking legs. So after discussing all the classes, we will summarizing entire classes of this. How many walking legs are they are having? What is the respiratory structure? What is the excretory structures? So that very important for your knee. So they are having this four walking legs and one chelicea, and there is a pedipod additional structure they are having. And their body is divided into two parts. One is cephalothorax, and the remaining is an abdomen. In case of this, it is gradually decreasing. Then, and posterior side there is a claw, and that is very poisonous. Okay, uh, and these are the two additional uh, important uh, facts about the scorpion. So then we will move on to the next class that is insecta, and insecta is the largest class in animal kingdom so whereas the largest phylum is arthropoda in animal kingdom and insecta is the largest class in animal kingdom because it includes many species all the insects okay class insecta insecta it is a largest class in animal kingdom and the body is divided into three parts so this is very important whenever you find any insect okay any flies so the main the division is three and that is head thorax and abdomen three parts so whatever we have seen in crustacea and the arachnida the head and the thorax is fused together but this they are separate abdomen okay now from head region so head region we will find compound eyes one pair of compound eyes and we will see one pair of antenna and we will see the different mouth parts from head region so these mouth parts may be biting and chewing type the example is cockroach
and they may be piercing and sucking type it may be mosquito and it may be sponge type example is house fly from thorax region okay from thorax region we get we find three pairs of walking legs so whereas other phylum sarapnida we find the, the three four pairs of the walking leg and one pair one pair of chelaceae and one pair of pedipod and here we find only three pairs of walking legs and we will see one or two pairs of wings also and this class they have started showing the wings pairs of wings so as of now in animal kingdom we have not seen wings at all and this is the first class of animals they started showing the wings okay oh. so they they are having all the insects are having the three pairs of walking legs hence we call them as exapods exapod so class insecta is also known as exapoda okay now these insects are having the tracheal respiration system and the excretory structures are malpighian tubules malpighian tubules and some are having urate cells also urate cells now all the insects they show by they are they show sexual dimorphism all insects they show sexual dimorphism and the development is indirect so examples cockroach house flies honey bees i can write bees mosquitoes lepisma butterflies moths xenopsila etc okay so we will be studying these examples now let us start with cockroach and we are just seeing the important facts here important characters we are not going to type study today so in our next class uh, we will see that the complete type study of the cockroach the cockroach uh, their body also divides into head thorax and abdomen so from head region we will find one pair of compound i so we will discuss what is this compound i and there is one pair of simple i also simple i and one pair of antenna
and this antenna acts like a olfactory sensei and now the biting and chewing type and chewing type mouth parts will start okay and the thorax okay the thorax there are three segments from each segment the one pair of uh, walking legs total three pairs of walking legs will arise and there are two pairs of wings will start okay now this is uh, these are the structures which arises from the body okay now <clears throat> their excretory structures are malpighian tubules and the respiratory structures are trachea they show sexual dimorphism and in female cockroaches okay the the anterior wing, wings are larger than the posterior wings in case of females so, and there are some additional differences we will come to know when we are studying the uh, type study of cockroach okay as of now just remember they show sexual dimorphism the female cockroach has larger posterior wings then anterior wings okay this is one of one of the sexual dimorphism and the next example is lepisma so this is generally called as silver fish it is not fish but the sh body shape looks like fish people assumes like a fish so we find this silver fish in old books if you go to any old library uh, you will find this kind of uh, silver fish in between the pages old books and even in old clothes if any clothes are lying there some years we will find a silver fish okay this is called as lepisma and the next example we will study butterfly and moth together so we will study butterfly and moth together because there is so many similar characters between them butterfly and moths now butterfly is it is uh, available in many colors brightly colored whereas the moth is brown color brown color one there is no many uh, different colors of the moths only brown color and black color but the butterfly we find in many colors when butterflies are sitting when they are in sitting wings come closer so when the butterflies are sitting uh, the both the wings close together wings close together but in case of moths they becomes wider so the moth wings will become wider
and butterflies are active at daytime we call them as diurnal and moths are active at night time they are nocturnal okay both have a larval stage we call them as caterpillar we are also caterpillar okay now the butterflies have a mouth parts very important mouth parts or sponge in type sponge in type whereas mouth moths moths are having biting and chewing type chewing type these are the uh, differences we can observe in the moths and butterflies okay yes now we'll move on to the very important uh, examples that is bees so bees generally called as a piece they also called as honey bees honey bees so we have four varieties of bees one is apis dorsata and apis floris and we have apis indica and these are all these three are the indigenous varieties and we have one australian variety that is apis mellifera so important of this apis mellifera when compared to the indigenous indigenous honey bees are most ferocious okay so with the use of these uh, bees we cannot do honey culture okay the honey culture what we call as apiculture so it is not possible to do because they are very aggressive okay that's the reason we have developed this australian variety that is apis mellifera now the farmers who are doing this apiculture they are using this kind of variety now the apis mellifera and it has less docile you know easy to handle and they do not have that much of poisonous uh, stinging claw so that people can have a safe culture of this apiculture the farming of honey we call it as apiculture apiculture in commercial form okay the colonies what they make we call it as bee hives bee hives so in bee hives there are three kinds of bees one is called as queen so queen is a single one okay only one one queen will be there queen bee i can write so only one in number they survive up to 2 years okay these are fertile female and the second one is drones they are few in number few in the sense around 40 to 50 in a bee hives okay not more than that they survive up to 3 months and the drones are sterile oh, sorry fertile males and third category is worker bees
they are more in number more in number maybe they are 500 to 1000 and they survive for only 45 days they are sterile beings With these three kinds of uh, bees we find in a bee house. Okay. Now, the function of this bees, uh, the queen bees, is to lay eggs. The job of queen, queen bees is to only lay eggs, and the drones are to fertile. And the functions of the worker bees or construction of construction of bee half means the construction of that hexagonal cells all together and cleaning of the cells and once the royal gel is filled then it has to seal sealing and they are the one who give food for those two bees also. <coughs> Nurturing other bees and collection of royal jelly, collection of royal jelly and uh, pollens, everything. So this is the worker bees has the many functions. Now the queen bee, they lay eggs. They lay two types of eggs. Queen bee. They, and the genetic condition is deployed in yeah, they lay two types of eggs. And they lay fertilized eggs. And they also lay unfertilized eggs unfertilized means it is not fused with the male gametes fertilized eggs means they are in haploid in condition whereas fertilized eggs are diploid in condition now these eggs now when they are fed with royal jelly if these eggs are fed with, no, there are eggs are there, no, when they are fed with the royal jelly. Royal jelly is the saliva, saliva of the worker bees after they are collecting the, uh, from the flowers, royal jelly. Now these eggs transforms into queen, which is a deployed in condition. This is a fertile female. When this fertilized eggs are fed with uh, brie bread, and they transforms into worker bees. Worker bees and worker bees are sterile males. Okay, sterile and their condition is also in deployed condition. Now these unfertilized eggs, these are un unfertilized eggs, they directly matures into complete an organism. Okay, they give into the drones. Drones are the fertile males okay they are in haploid condition only and this phenomenon and without fertilizing the eggs are transforming into as in complete individual we call it as parthenogenesis parthenogenesis this is an unusual phenomena in uh, life forms okay that is called as the parthenogenesis 
the unfertilized eggs directly transforms and directly matures into the complete organism that phenomena is called as parthenogenesis it can be seen in eggs if you see the genetic constitution it will have only the uh, queen part and that to male chromosomes only and that directly develops into the tree drones okay now we'll move on to the mosquitoes and we know that mosquitoes plays many roles to transmit the diseases and there are three important varieties one is anaphylaxis and the variety culex and aedes these three important varieties of mosquitoes and we know that female anaphylaxis they sucks the human blood okay animal blood whereas the males they always sucks the plants plant fluids okay in case of uh, anaphylaxis in case of culex even in case of aedes only female uh, mosquitoes uh, targets the animals okay now we'll move on to the next one that is xenopsila Now, Xenopsila is commonly called as rat flea. So we know that Xenopsila is uh, arthropod in Xenopsila intestine. So there is a bacteria which causes the plague. Is known as Yermesia. pesticides okay so in xenopsila stomach there is a bacteria which is called as ermesia so can we call this ermesia pestis as a endoparasite of xenopsila okay now this xenopsila they stick on rats okay so xenopsila stick on rats so can we call xenopsila is a ectoparasite of the rat yes yes ectoparasite so if you see this kind of association so there is an arthropod in this arthropod intestine there is a bacteria that is ermesia pestis is an endoparasite and this xenopsila is on the rat as a ectoparasite this kind of association we call it as hyperparasitism hyperparasitism okay and this ermesia pestis causes plague plague disease so wherever this uh, rat is moving and xenopsila also moves and in the xenopsila stomach this ermesia is there okay so the rats are actually causing this plague disease because the rat doesn't move the xenopsila doesn't move and this is a disease we acquired from hong kong this is not an indigenous disease and they came through the containers ships and all no through the rats so rats are actually transmitting this kind of disease okay and uh, parasitism we call it as hyperparasitism and this is all about the class insecta now we'll move on to the next class in arthropoda we will study two classes together now the chilopoda and diplopoda together because they have many 
similar characters diplopoda chilopoda and diplopoda now the the example for chilopoda is centipedes centipedes we can also call them as centipodes centipedes both are same and example for diplopoda is millipedes millipedes <coughs> now the centipedes the body is divides into head and trunk head and trunk this is head there is this silici and this is the segments okay there are 40 to 50 sorry 50 to 60 abdominal segments from each abdominal segment there is one pair of jointed appendages walking legs so so means how many legs it has 100 to 120 so 100 to 120 legs that's the reason we call them as centipedes okay and it has a claw very poisonous claw okay that's how it defends from the enemies and they are carnivores carnivores they are nocturnal and they are fast moving so in case of this diplopods the body is divides into head thorax and trunk so let me draw this this is the head this is the thorax part and follows by the small abdominal segments we call them as trunk they also have this chelicia but they don't have sting now from this thorax part every thorax we have one pair of walking leg from abdominal segments from every segment there is two pairs of walking legs so that is the reason it looks like millipodes millions of legs okay so it is looking like millions of this and these millipedes are herbivores and they are diurnal and very slow moving whereas this centipedes they have a poisonous claw but they do not have this poisonous claw what they will do they will release some foul smelling Foul smell, smelling substance. Okay, very bad smelling substance they will release, but because they have some sting glands, sting glands. Okay, 
and so whenever it irritates okay whenever you try to touch it and it coils these two things will happen in case of the millipedes okay they are di uh, they are diurnal herbivorous they are very slow moving uh, they release some bad uh, smelling agents and moment it touches whenever it irrit uh, irritates they coils together they tightly coils okay and this is all about the class chilopoda and decapoda and then we'll move on to the the last class in arthropod that is mirostomata so example of this uh, mirostomata is limulus it is generally known as king crab because it has a very large carapace that is in horseshoe shape that's the reason we call it as horse shoe shape carap uh, crab okay now the body it has very large carapace that is into this horseshoe shape the carapace okay so i'll draw another way very large carapace the important thing is they have five pairs of walking legs they also have one pair of chelicerae okay and the respiratory structures are book gills book lungs we have seen in scorpions but this limulus has book gills gills we have seen in prawns okay and the respiratory uh, excretory structures are coxal glands and we can also find in here the tail sun so tail sun is the one character by that we can differentiate the crab and king crab okay so these are the about the classes of uh, arthropoda we have seen the various examples of the uh, arthropoda we have seen the general characters and the peculiar characters and we have seen the different classes and with examples so in our next class we will start with the type study of arthro uh, uh, cockroach okay